Okay, so this week we are going to do experiment on two-dimensional collision. If you remember a couple of weeks back when you did the conservation of linear momentum on the example of one-dimensional collisions, you learned that if there is no net forces acting on the system, then momentum is conserved, which means that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. You remember that you calculated momentum by multiplying mass times velocity, and the momentum is a vector quantity, and same velocity is vector quantity. You also know that calculating velocity is simple the displacement over a period of time. Now, in this example, what you will have, you have along the x-axis target marble that's at rest, and then you have a projectile marble that's moving with some initial velocity. After the collision, these two marbles will collide at the origin here, and they will scatter in the horizontal, this xy 2d plane. The main reason why we can say that momentum is conserved is because the collision is happening in horizontal plane, so there is no external forces acting on the system, and we are neglecting the air drag. So after the collision, situation will look like this. Let's say that projectile marble went in this direction, and that the target marble went in this direction here. So this is your the distance that projectile marble traveled after the collision. It's a vector. And this is a distance that the target marble traveled after the collision. It's also a vector. You can get x and y components of this RT and RP vector simply by projecting it on the um, x and y axis. So this is going to be your vector for rp in y direction and this is your vector rp in x direction same for the uh, target marble this is your vector rt in y direction and this is your vector RT in X direction. Once you have these vectors and their components, it is easy to write the equation for conservation of linear momentum. So initial momentum is going to be mass of the projectile times velocity initial of the projectile. And we know that the velocity is the distance the projectile traveled. And we call this R0 over period of time. The final momentum I forgot to tell you here that the target was at rest, so it's just going to be equal to 0. The final momentum is going to be mass of the projectile, velocity of the projectile final, which is Rp over period of time, plus mass of the target, the distance the target traveled after the collision over period of time. The final momentum will have two components. So in x direction, the final momentum will be mass of the projectile, rpx over period of time, plus mass of the target, rtx over period of time. And then in y direction, a 
is going to be mass of the projectile. RP in Y direction over a period of time. You need to look at your drawing and you see that your RP in Y direction points in the positive Y axis. So then this component of the momentum is going to be positive. And then for the target, the Y component of the displacement points into the negative Y direction. So that's why it's going to be minus mass of the target the displacement in y direction over a period of time. Before the collision, the momentum equation will only have x component, and the reason for that is because the target was stationary and projectile was moving along the x direction. Okay, so let's recap. If there are no external forces acting on the system, the momentum is going to be conserved. Momentum is a vector quantity, and it's calculated by multiplying the mass of the object with its velocity. Velocity is vector quantity and it's a displacement of the object over a period of time. The following example is what you will do in this experiment. So you have a target that's initially at rest and then you have a projectile marble that's moving with some initial velocity. They will collide at the origin and then they will scatter in 2D XY plane where the target will go into the fourth quadrant of the XY coordinate system and the projectile will go into the first quadrant. This is not necessarily the case. You may have a image in your experiment where the target is in the first quadrant and the projectile is in the fourth quadrant. What is important here to remember, instead of measuring the angles, you will measure the distance that the projectile marble traveled in, uh, in this plane and the distance that the target marble traveled in this plane. And then it will decompose these vectors in X and Y components. You have to be careful here. Whichever object falls into the fourth quadrant, the Y component of the displacement is going to be negative. Then you can write down the equations for the momentum. Initially, target was at rest, so momentum was zero, and the projectile was moving with some initial velocity that can be calculated by dividing the displacement of the projectile marble with time. The final momentum, both projectile and target are going to have final momentum. And because this is happening in 2D, you're going to have two equations, x component of the final momentum, x component of the momentum of the projectile, plus x component of the momentum of the target. And in the y direction, y component of the projectile's momentum, and the y component of the target's momentum. Here, because target went to the fourth quadrant, the y component of the momentum for target is going to be negative. This is really important. You have to be careful with signs. So always look at your figure and see which object is in the fourth quadrant. That one will have the Y component of the displacement and consequently the Y component of the velocity negative. Okay, this is the old theory that you need to know in order to complete this experiment. Next video will show you how to run the experiment and hopefully everything will run smoothly. Okay, let's now move on on the actual experimental demo. Okay, so this week's video is going to be a little bit challenging to record and maybe a little bit more challenging for you guys to see. We are doing two-dimensional collision. This is your setup. You have this rail here. Uh, along this rail, you're going to release the projectile. Target is going to sit here on this post. And then once the projectile hits the target, and I will show you in a second how to make sure that the collision is center of the mass to center of the mass, everything will happen in horizontal plane. And then you will map everything on the paper on the floor.
because everything is happening in horizontal plane uh, and we are neglecting the uh, air resistance, we can say that momentum is conserved because there are no uh, external forces acting on the system where in the horizontal plane. What we have on your table, you have some carbon paper, you have two marbles, uh, these are going to change from semester to semester. Sometimes they're going to be both steel, sometimes both glass. Material is going to change. We have this uh, plunge bob here, or whatever is it called, I'm sorry, uh, that will help us find the uh, origin for our uh, horizontal plane. And we have some masking tape that we are going to use to secure the paper on the floor. And then you're going to align the paper with the track, so the track is along the x-axis. I already pre-secured the paper on the floor because I'm doing this video on my own. So just make sure it's kind of at the center of the track. And once you're sure that your origin, meaning that the point from here, from the post where the target is going to be placed, is on the paper right so next step is to determine the origin and by holding this device here to make a straight line with the post down to the paper we are going to stabilize it here and mark the position of the origin. So the next step is we are going to place the carbon paper on the white paper on the floor. And then we are going to release the projectile marble from the track down on the white paper. And by repeating this step 10 times, we're going to get a cluster of 10 points, connecting the origin and uh, this cluster of these 10 points, we are going to get our x-axis. Okay, here we go. I am not going to do this 10 times simply because I'm doing this on my own. You will work with your lab partner. One person will release and another person will catch the ball. Okay, I have enough. Let's take a look and see what we have here. So as you can see, we have this cluster of points here. You see we have two of these out and then three of these that are clustered here. So that's the reason why we are doing this 10 times. And then we're going to connect the center of this cluster to, to our origin to get the x-axis. Okay, let's see if I can show you this. I don't know if you can see this clearly, but here we are, the origin and the center of the cluster. And this position here, this distance from the origin to center of the cluster will be the R0. It's a distance that uh, projectile traveled without the um, target in place. Okay, so this is going to be our R0. Now we have to get to the um, y-axis. So I'm going to use the ruler here to make the uh, 90 degrees angle to create the y-axis. You can use protector to measure this angle as well. And the negative side of the y-axis here. I don't know if you can see this okay now the next step is to make sure that the target marble 
when it's placed here will be hit by the projectile marble at the center. So you want to place the target and projectile marbles like this and then you're going to look at the center of the mass of each and then by adjusting this post here you want to make sure that the projectile marble will hit the target marble at the center. Only in this case the collision will happen in horizontal plane and momentum will be conserved. The next step is to measure the distance from the floor to the center of the target marble and that will be your the distance of the free fall, your value for h. To measure the value for h, simply use the ruler and then measure from the floor to the center of the mass. And this value is between 75, 76 and 78 centimeters, depending on which lab and which table. Okay, so now when you're set for everything, one person will be releasing the projectile marble and another person will be catching them. Also, you want to do a test run. You want to place some carbon paper on the floor. And you want to do the test run, you want to see uh, on which side of the x-axis the target will fall and which side the projectile will fall. Basically you want to make sure that you know uh, if the target or projectile end up in the first or in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so here we go, you will do this ten times. And because I'm doing this experiment on my own, I will only do this a couple of times. So I'm noticing that my target is falling into the fourth quadrant and projectile into the first quadrant. Okay. Okay, once you're done with colliding these two marbles 10 times, you can actually see we have clusters here. Let me turn around so you can see what I am looking from the positive x-axis back to the origin. Here we have a cluster of the target marbles because at this station here, the target marble fell into the fourth quadrant and then here I have cluster of the projectile marble. Okay so now we can lift this off the floor it's easier to work on the table. Okay so this may be difficult to see but um, so you know that your target marble went to the fourth quadrant, which means that the y component of this vector, rt, that you created by connecting the uh, origin to the center of the cluster, the y component of this vector is going to be negative you're going to measure the distance, the length of this RT vector. Then you're going to make a projection. Again, you can use a protractor to measure the 90 degree angle with the x-axis. I like to use a ruler. Okay. 
So then this distance here is going to be your RT y and it's going to have a negative value because it is in the port quadrant and then this distance here is going to be your rtx so you're going to have your rt rtx y and this is your rtx you're going to measure the length of your rt vector and the components of the rt and then you're going to I'm going to bring this on this side here so you can see then you're going to repeat the same thing with the rp vector and then you're going to make a projection on the y-axis again you can use a protector to make a projection so this is going to be your r P X component, this is your RPY component and RP. Once you have these values, now you're ready to complete your um, table in your lab manual and proceed with calculating the kinetic energy before the collision and kinetic energies after the collision. Remember that after the collision, uh, you had a kinetic energy for the target and you had a kinetic energy for the projectile. While before the collision only projectile had a kinetic energy and then you will calculate the fractional change in kinetic energy. When you're calculating momentum, please remember that momentum is mass times velocity.